Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you come into contact at all with Linux, whether that's at work or at home, or maybe you have a server, a web server, or on the internet, at some point you're gonna to have to use the Linux terminal and understand some Linux commands. Now, when you first open up that terminal, whether you log in remotely to your server, you see that blinking cursor, it can be quite daunting. Well, if you wanna know some of the fundamental introductory commands for the Linux terminal, please let me explain. Okay, so here we are logged into a terminal on a Raspberry Pi. Of course, you could use a terminal on Ubuntu or Fedora or any Linux distribution that you're using and you'll be presented with a prompt and it can be a bit daunting if you're a beginner. It's just sitting there. What, what, what do you type now? What's the first step? Well, I'm gonna show you some basic Linux commands that will really help you understand the command line and really give you a good boost, a good start into using the command line. So the very first command you need to know is ls and that lists the files in the current directory. So you just type ls and then you hit enter. And here we can see it has listed the files. Now, there are different types of files here. The ones that are in blue are directories. And you can see the ones that are in white are uh, files. In this case, they are text files. Now, we can use wildcards to list different files. So we could do ls star dot text. And that just shows us the files that have got the dot txt uh, ending there. Now, there's also some parameters you could pass into uh, ls. So you could do ls minus L, and that gives you a much uh, longer listing. So the L there for long, a longer listing. So here we can see on the right hand side, the list of the files, but then to the left of that, we see a date and a time. Then we see the size, then we see who owns the file, and then we see the permissions. Now I'm gonna do a whole different video on how you understand all those permissions there, D, R, W, X, R, dash, that's all quite complicated. We'll deal with that in a separate video. But you can see here the size and the date and time gives you really much more details of each of those files. Now, there's another thing you can what you don't know is that in uh, or Linux and Unix in general, if a file begins with a dot, it becomes a hidden file. So if we do ls minus a for all, we actually get to see all the hidden files. And look at this here, look, there's dot aptitude, dot bash, history, dot bash, lag out, log out, dot cache, dot debus, dot local. There's loads of files here. And when you just do a normal LS, they are not shown, but the files are there. And that's because they start with a dot. So you can hide any file by making it start with a, with a dot. So LS minus A will list out all the files. Now you can actually combine those two together. So you can have an LS minus LA. So that gives you the long form for Format of all the files so here we can see all those dot files along with the date along with the time and along with their size so actually you'll probably find that you get quite used to just typing ls minus la all the time because that shows you everything rather than just ls which is actually quite a short uh, description of what's going on okay so let's move on now we see here that there are different directories so it would be good if we could go into some of those directories so to go into different directories, you use the cd command, change directory, cd, and that allows you to go into the different directories. If you're from a Windows world, they would be called folders. In the Unix and Linux world, they're called uh, directories. So we could go into downloads, for example, so we could do cd, uh, d-o-n, loads, and then we could do an ls, and actually that uh, directory is empty. So then we can do, if we want to go back up a directory, we do a cd dot dot. Now that takes us back up to this top directory. Now, why is that? Well, let's go back into downloads again. And now let's do an ls minus la. You'll notice there are two files that are here, dot and dot dot. Now, they are the only two files in this directory. When we just do an ls, we saw it was empty, but an ls minus la shows there are two files. Now, dot actually means the current directory. So if I do cd dot, I actually end up back where I was in the downloads directory and we're back where we're. If you do dot dot, that means a directory above me. So cd dot dot takes you always to the directory above, which is what we've just done. Now, if we go into the pictures directory, for example, okay, here we can see there are lots more files, lots of JPEG files. And so you can do an ls minus la and get a list of all those JPEG files. And the same thing applies here. If we do a cd dot dot, that gets us back up to the directory that we were in before. So cd to change a directory, and cd dot dot to take you back up one directory. Now you notice here on the left hand side that the prompt tells you what directory you're in. So if we went into downloads again, here on the left now it now says 
uh, Pi, Raspberry Pi, and then it says downloads there. So it tells you what directory you're in. But if you want to find out what directory you're in from the command line, you type PWD, print working directory. Okay, and that tells me I'm in slash home slash pi slash downloads. If I do a cd dot dot and now do a pwd, I'm in slash home slash pi. If I do a cd into pictures and do a pwd, I am now in slash home slash pi slash pictures. And now let's go back up a directory. And here we are again. Now, of course, you can create directories if you want to put some new fun stuff in a directory. You do mk for make dir, make directory. And then we might have Gary uh, explains. Okay, and now if we do an ls, we can see that Gary explains is here. It has been uh, created as a directory. We can do a cd into Gary explains. It's empty at the moment, except for if you do an ls minus la, of course, there is dot and dot dot in there. And we can type pwd and see I'm in home slash pi slash Gary explains. cd dot dot takes us back up to our home directory. And of course, we can remove a directory rmdir Gary explains and that now gets rid of it if we do an ls it's gone now you can only remove empty directories so how do you actually delete files well if we now go into the pictures directory now let's list the files in here and we see all those jpeg files so let's try to delete genes.jpg so the way you do that is rm for remove rm genes.jpg and now if we do an ls, we can see that it has gone. We can also use wildcards, but of course you have to be very, very careful with this. We could remove all the ones starting with p, for example, rmpstar.jpg. And now if we have a look, they are all gone. Pool.jpg, pebblelight.jpg, for example, have all now gone. Now there are more powerful commands you can do with rm, but I'm gonna leave those for an advanced course because you can obviously do a lot of damage with RM if you don't do things right. And we'll talk more about uh, all the advanced things you can do that in a separate video. So if you wanted to empty out a directory and then you can delete it, you would use the RM command. Now, while we're here, let's talk about copying. You can actually copy files as well. We've been able to delete them, so let's copy them. So let's do a CP for copy. And now let's pick cheese. .dpg, and then you need to give it the name of the file that you want to call it. So we will call it cheese2.jpg. And now if we do an ls, we can see we have a cheese and a cheese2. And they are exactly the same file. If we do an ls minus la and then scroll up here, you can see look the same file size because they were they are just one copy of the other. So that's pretty easy. Now, of course, you can copy files to other places. So we can actually do cp cheese. Uh, dot jpd and if we do dot dot what that says is copy the file to the directory above so we do dot dot okay and now if we do a cd dot dot and then an ls we can now see that cheese dot jpg uh, is here which of course was what we've just copied up here and now we can remove that cheese dot jpg now if we go back down into pictures again okay we can actually move to other directories so we uh, copy to other we could do copy cheese dot dpd to dot dot upper directory and now down a directory below let's put it into downloads and let's copy another one let's copy uh aqua dot dot slash downloads okay so that means go copy the file aqua up a directory and then down into the downloads directory now another way you could do it of course is if we did a pwd here we've got slash home slash pi slash pictures so we could use this full name if we wanted to so we could do uh, cp uh, mazes dot jpg to slash home slash pi slash downloads so we're giving it the full name the full qualified path slash home slash pi slash downloads and that would also copy it there so now if we go cd up sorry cd up we are in the top directory and we now go into downloads and here we can find those three files that we copied aqua cheese and and mazes now in the same way that you can copy files you can also move them so let's go back to our pictures directory so let's pick a file here let's look at stone.dpd if we do move stone.jpg to dot dot 
Okay, now if we look in here, stone.jpg is no longer there. Stone dark is, but stone is no longer there because we've moved it, not copied it. And if we now go up CD, we can find that stone.jpg is here. And we can now further move stone.jpg into, into the downloads uh, directory. And it's gone from here. We now go into downloads and we can see it's there. Now, a side effect of this move uh, command is it actually becomes a rename command because we can move a file to the same directory but with a new name. So if we rename stone.jpd to rock.jpg and now do an ls we can see that stone.jpg has gone but rock.jpg is there and it's the same file we've just given it a new name. So move allows you to move a file from one folder to another or to rename a file in its current directory. You can actually also do the rename during a cop during the move. So we can actually do move uh, rock.jpd to dot dot uh, slash stone.jpg and that will move it up one directory and rename it all in one go. So if we now go up here, there we can see stone.jpg uh, and let's now move it back uh, into pictures and then everything will be back the way it was before. Okay, so now it's gone to there. So that was move. Move allows you to move a file around and also to change its name. Now you'll notice here I've got some TXT files and I wanted to just look at some of the things we could do with text files. And one of the things you can do is you can examine to see what's inside of it without going into an editor, just by actually saying, show me the contents of this file. And the most simplest command for that is one called cat, as in concatenate this file to the standard output, which means to the terminal. Concatenate it to the terminal. And let's look at uh, colors. So you can do cat colors, and then it just shows you all those colors listed out there. And we could do that with any of the files. So that's what cat does. Now, cat can do lots of other interesting things, and I will leave that until my more advanced video, but it's a good command to know that exists and a good way of looking quickly at what's in a, in a file. But as you can see here, that list of files we can see on our screen, it starts at purple uh, and of course there, are, there is more. Now we can scroll up and see it here, we can see it starts with amber and so on. We could do that, but there's another way of looking at a command, uh, file to, and to get it see it at a page at a time, at one screen at a time. And that's the command more, so we could do more colors.txt and as you can see we start with amber here at the top and then it says, oh more, you've seen 40% and then you have to press the space bar to see some more of the file. And then we've got gold all the way down to uh, rose, red and rose. And then we can hit again and it gets us to the end of the file. So that's a good way of seeing uh, the content of a file one page at a time. Now more has been kind of superseded by a command called less with the idea that less is more. Uh, so it does exactly the same thing. You could just do less colors.txt uh, and again we can see those files until the very end. Now there are some differences, there are different commands you can do but you can use less or more and it will do uh, exactly the same thing. It allows you to see what's in a file uh, one page at a time. Okay, so there you have it, 10 important fundamental commands for the Linux terminal. Now, originally I recorded 15 commands, but this video went over 20 minutes long. So I decided to cut it to 10, and the other five I'm going to present in a video, maybe in a week or so. So please leave me a comment below if you want to know the extra five commands that I've already recorded, and I will publish a second video. You also know what else I'm gonna ask you. Please subscribe, please hit that bell notification icon. Please leave a comment, please leave a thumbs up, and please share this video on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.